Okay, hi. Uh, so good afternoon, everybody, and thanks for coming. Um, so uh, my name is Amit Mandelbaum. I'm going to present today a work about distance-based confidence score for uh, neural network classifiers. This was uh, down, uh, done as part of my research in the Hebrew University under the supervision of uh, Professor Daphne Weinstein. So first off, let's start with uh, some motivation. Um, as you all know, and this is why we're here today, um, deep learning has become an essential tool in many, many fields, in uh, NLP and vision and speech, and also in sensitive fields like cybersecurity, uh, medical and autonomous driving. And while a lot of work has been done on uh, improving the accuracy of neural network classifiers, not much work has been done on calibrating the confidence of the classifiers in its prediction. And this is something very important. Only today I thought three lectures that use the confidence score of a classifier for some task. And still there are not much work done in calibrating. And this is important, for example, if we want to involve a human expert, if some classification is incorrect, or we want to um, <coughs> defend against adversarial attacks, or in autonomous driving, these things that can be uh, important to the uh, level of life saving. And therefore, in this work, we present a new confidence score, which is scalable, easy to implement, and achieve a significant improvement over the currently used methods. So, talking about um, currently used methods, so to this day, and this is a bit surprising, but to this day, uh, to an pretty basic confidence score are used when someone refers to a confidence score of a neural network classifier. The first is the max activation. You take the softmax layer of the network and you just take the, maximal the value of the maximal neuron and this is your confidence uh, level, which is a number between zero and one. And another confidence which is used is the negative, negative entropy of this same softmax uh, vector. And Surprisingly, though these scores are quite simple, they prove to work usually much better than other more complex scores. However, in many cases, and this was shown by a lot of research, especially in the recent uh, two years, they fail to provide a reliable confidence measure. One method that was shown to improve the entropy score is the MC dropout. We won't get into details, but we, we will compare to it later. Another method and, uh, which used to uh, improve the entropy, and this is something I also use, so I'll get a bit into it, is the adversarial training method. And this is not to be confused with adversarial networks, though it's coming from the same person. So adversarial examples are ways to attack neural networks. You put a, 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 an image or something else that looks very similar to the original image, but is classified Wrong, usually with a very high confidence. And Dian Goodfellow, the man who discovered this uh, sort of samples, uh, suggested a way to protect the network by augmenting the trained data with adversarial, tra uh, adversarial samples during training. And this method was shown to also improve the network uh, entropy confidence score. So after reviewing the basic methods, let's get to our method. So, and this is almost a known fact, um, convolutional neural networks are um, often used as feature extractors. You can take a trained uh, network on ImageNet or something like this, get, put an image and get the representation from the layer, the one before last layer, and this is your new image representation that can be used for other networks or some other simpler models like SVM. Um, and this is used in this way because it was shown in, by many, many works that re the representations or embeddings coming from this layer provide a much more um, better semantic representation of the input. And therefore, they are very useful for other algorithms. And in accordance, like in word embeddings, when words with the same or close meaning have their embeddings very close to each other in the embedding space. In images too, and this was shown also, images from the same class should reside close to each other in the embedding space, while images not from the same class should reside far from each other. And this is something we can use to provide a better 
confidence scores that use this fact. So what we do, suppose we have a test sample, and this test sample is classified to some class. According to what I just said, if this test sample in the embedding space have a neighbors from the train data which belong to the same class it was classified, then this classification is probably correct, because as we said, images from the same class should reside close to each other. And therefore, for this kind of classification, we want the confidence to be high because it's most probably correct. On the other hand, if we have a prediction for some test sample and the embeddings of this test sample does not lie close to train samples from the same class, then this prediction is probably incorrect. And we want to have low confidence for this prediction. And therefore, we derive this formula that what we do there is for each test sample, we find its k nearest neighbors in the embedding space, and we sum the distances from all trained samples that belong to the same class and divide it by the distance from all neighbors from all classes. And then we can get a score which, if the trained sample have and only neighbors that belong to the same class, this confidence will be one. And if it lies, the farther it, reach, it lies from the trained samples of the same class, the distance score or the distance confidence score we propose will get lower and lower to the point it gets to zero. And this is how we can use the embedding space to provide a better confidence score. We do found, however, that the embeddings of a neural network trend for classification only are, might not be good enough to uh, use for this confidence score reliably. And therefore, we propose two ways to slightly change the training procedure in order to achieve better embeddings. And this is, by the way, can be useful not only for our confidence score, but to improve the actual semantic representation of this layer. So the straightforward way is just to add a term to the classification loss of the network, which is usually the cross entropy, and this is a distance loss. The distance loss is calculated on the embedding layer, such that we want the embeddings of trained samples from the same class to have a distance zero from each other, and we want trained samples that do not belong to the same class, we want their embeddings to be at least a distance m from each other. And this, is, this helps, of course, in a straightforward way to improve the embedding space so we'll, we do have samples from the same class like close to each other. And surprisingly, while not designed for this at all, using adversarial training during training also improves the representation in the embedding space such that our confidence score can be used with those embeddings. And the important note is that both ways do not affect the network accuracy and therefore can be used for any network without degrading the network performance. So, to sum, uh, we have, <coughs> I proposed the confidence score and now proposed a ways to improve the embeddings for the confidence score, but as I said, it's useful not only for this. So after proposing the score, let's test it. So the first and most, uh, I don't know, common task for confidence score is predicting whether a classification of, a, 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 whether a prediction of a classifier is correct. We want to know not only the, class, the prediction itself, but we also want to know if the pre prediction is correct or incorrect. So what we do in the test, we took three different data sets, three different net networks and three different accuracy settings. And after getting the predictions for each of the test samples, we use the confidence score to predict whether this classification is correct or incorrect. And this is a binary test, so we use the area under the curve score. And we tested the basic confidence score on different kinds of networks, one that use our proposed uh, training changes and ones that are regular. And we also compared it to network to entropy scores that were improved by other adversarial training or MC dropout. And in all cases, our distance score, when, um, when used on a network that was uh, slightly changed by either a distance loss or adversarial training, achieves significant improvement on this task of knowing if a classification is correct or incorrect. 
So the second task is novelty detection, and this is also a task quite common for using a confidence score. In novelty detection, we, have a, we train a network on some data set, and on test time, we can get samples that do not belong to any class that were seen during, during training. And this is something that is really useful in real-world application, because we know that if you put some classifier in the wild, it might see a lot of pictures it never seen during training. For example, if we take autonomous car, it, it can see a road sign that it never seen during training. And these are things that we need to be able to spot and know that we need to ignore the prediction of the classifier because the classification is absolutely incorrect because the these samples do not belong to, the, to any of the classes in the training data. So here again, we want to use the confidence score to predict whether a test sample is known or novel. So what we do in this uh, task, we train the network on some data set, and then during test time, we give the network test samples from either the data set that it was trained on, on another data set that it was not trained on, and those samples of this data set do not belong to any class of the uh, class that it was trained on. And here you can see again, that our confidence score achieve significant improvement over the currently used confidence score, and once again, even when they are improved by adversarial training. Finally, a confidence score can be used on ensemble methods. When we combine the predictions of several neural networks, we, there are many ways to combine them. We can do simple averaging, or we can do some uh, weighted average or voting mechanism, and this was shown to improve the overall accuracy of the model. And here, we can use the confidence score for giving, for example, higher weight in the weighted average or giving more votes in the voting mechanism. And these are the results for the CIFA 100 dataset, and the results are the same for other datasets. You can see the top two lines, the yellow and the blue line, are both two variants that use our confidence score for giving more weight in the weighted average case. And the red line is the best method that we uh, found, which do not use our confidence score. And you can see that for any number of networks that are used in the ensemble, using our confidence score achieves significant improvement in the accuracy of the ensemble. So, to conclude, we proposed a distance-based confidence score, which is simple to implement and can fit any kind of neural network. We showed, and this is the second contribution, we, saw, we showed how suitable embedding can be achieved by a distance-based loss or adversarial training. And our new score achieved the best results in all three tasks using a number of different data sets and different network architectures. And finally, we hope that this research will help practitioners and researchers alike make a better and more useful use of their algorithms. Thank you.